everybody. My name is Alex. My name is Eric. And I'm Jenny. <laughs> and welcome to this week's Immature Howard Podcast number 26. Woo! Yeah, I really like that thing. It's growing on me. Best $15 present I've ever gotten. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Love it. <laughs> so, I have a few interesting topics to talk about. Um, so for the topics that we're going to talk about, we're going to do we're going to do E3 predictions. But we're going to save that for last. Yes. We're going to go through the smaller That's topics take a while. first. So, um, were you here whenever we talked about the whole uh, Witcher three and the Witcher series thing about the about the author? Yeah. Or, yes. So it came out. How okay, much? Okay, but this was recently, right? So the so for the author mm-hmm. um, of the Witcher series. He sold the rights to the Witcher series years ago. Right. Whenever they made the Witcher series. But he's just two. now trying to get more money out of it, right? I, th- I don't think he's trying to get more money out of it now. I think he's just being a salty bitch. Okay. But oh, okay. it came out how much he sold the rights for the series to. How much? $9,500. <gasps> Holy shit. That's he's it? Sold- I would be salty too. And so here's the thing though. Like what's fucking crazy is that he had... What happened was he... He the uh, the people who wanted the rights to The Witcher wanted to offer to pay him um, royalties for the series, and he was like, "No, because um, there's no way that a video game will do that well. So I want you to pay me outright this much." And it was like nine thousand five hundred dollars. It was less than ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And then the series became to be a fucking cultural like phenomenon, and now it's worth like millions of dollars. Wow! Isn't Sucks that to suck, right? Dude. Like, like. I mean, I'm not going to say that's Fantastic. karma for being a bitch, but, I mean, that's kind of karma for being a bitch. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would you not, like, if you have the, the chance to take something that's not doing very well financially and potentially make more money off of it, why would you not take the royalty deal? Like, why would you offer, to, like, it's, that's just snarky. Like, that's just, oh, you're going to fucking ruin this, so. Well, it's it kind of shows, like, because he's an older guy, it kind of shows that the older generation just, like, how little they believe in the in the video game generation. Mm-hmm. And, in like, this this cultural phenomenon of gaming. Yeah. Um, like, he he apparently just had no, no belief in it whatsoever that a video game of his series would even do remotely well. But then at the same time, that kind of speaks, like, it's that a speaks fucking... volumes of, like, does he not have faith in his own world and universe That's what that he I'm created. Thinking. Like and it's medieval fantasy. Who doesn't want that? Like right? Sky, uh, Elder Scrolls has been doing it for years. People eat that shit up. Right? Like why dude it, uh, it oh man. Like I sucks for him. Like I, I, I don't even care. I don't so, feel bad for him at all. Does he like not get royal like money from his books anymore either? I don't know. Okay. I I, f- I feel like that he sold the he sold the rights to the enti- to the franchise like to the Witcher series. He sold right. the rights to it, so I don't know if like because he published the first few books and they're under his name that he gets that money because they were published under him. Yeah. Um. Oh, this is fucking adorable. Because <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, if I was an author and somebody was like, "Hey man, we want to buy your book," regardless if I believed in the video game world or not, I would be like, you know what? Sure, exactly. Give me royalties. Like, it, it's it's a it's another medium to like expand your audience of a you know of a book. Because I know I have like played and watched multiple things and been like, man, I'm gonna get this book now because like I want to know more about this world. Yeah, I know a lot right. of people who bought the Halo books because um, whenever the Halo books started coming out to expand their their knowledge of the lore and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which as a side note. Ended up being a problem that they release those books because now, like when you play the newer Halo games, a lot of the canon in it, you have to read the books to fully understand, which is super frustrating. That kind of goes to go off on a similar topic. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's did a very similar thing too. The author uh, or the the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott Cawthon, mm-hmm. a very very integral part of understanding the lore and the and the storyline of the Five Nights at Freddy's series is in the book. The I think it's called the um, Silver Eyes. Was it a book before it was a game? No, it was it was a book that came out after the third game. Okay. It was like games one through three, then the book, and then the fourth game and then Sister Location. Okay. 
And so, but it's a very integral part to be able to understand like how all the all the games tie together. Oh, okay. Uh, Man, I just I don't follow the Five Nights. See, I didn't even know it had a story until it's, like it, recently. Th- they're somewhat tied together, but like if if you're interested in go and watch the um like the game theorist videos. He has a lot of videos on it, like talking uh, about it. But it's actually really interesting to see like how much detail Scott Cawthon put into the games. Geez. Like very minute detail. Yeah. I don't know. I can't I can't get into Five Nights. One, it's strictly like a jump scare game. Which annoys me. Like I like psychological <laughs> stuff that messes with my head. It makes you think you're crazy. Go yeah. To, um, <laughs> have you seen anything about Sister Location? Mm. Sister Location is very much a big move from the jump scare when it's way more psychological. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I, I, cool. I would definitely check it out. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like I think it's really interesting that like some people like they use book adaptations, to, like mm. kind of expand their canon. Or yeah. Whatever. Because they did that with Star Wars, too. They had some books to expand the lore of Star Wars as Which well outside of the movies. Which they did scrap a large majority of it and then restarted. Whenever Lucas, uh, George Lucas sold the rights to Disney, all of the um, books and all the video games that came out before the, the, the purchase um, stopped being canon. So they basically restarted. I, it, was to, it was to... For The Force Awakens to work, they needed to wipe out some of the canon. Well... I mean, they could have just like they could have just used it. it I, I do like I do know like with the Force Awakens, there's a lot of similarities from what was like canon after the last mm-hmm. movie, but like <clears throat> I know that they pretty much re redid a lot of stuff. Let's see, I think I have a lot of Halo books actually. Yeah, I had a who is that? Aaron. Aaron. Left, but man, I can't pronounce the last name, unfortunately. But yeah, Aaron uh, is watching the live stream right now. Hello. Uh, he is saying um, he has a lot of the Halo books. Also, he said Silent Hill 2 is the best psychological horror game, which I haven't played that one, but I've heard the Silent Hill series is fantastic. Man, if PT was, was like, dude, PT, I know. PT was. <laughs> mm, it's okay, we been. got that stranding now. Do. Sony was like, hey, Kojima, here's money. Do what you want. Have fun. And I love that they just let him. He's like, here it. you go, buddy. And then, like, and then he's, he's like, he's like, oh, you done fucked up. And he's like, confusion. <laughs> not only that, Kojima. His but, confusion is his middle name. We're, <laughs> we're not gonna get the uh, Hideo confusion, Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> it actually sounds really good. <laughs> we're not gonna get Death Stranding for the next ten years. So it's okay because we're not getting Kingdom Hearts for the next like seven years either. Damn, that's true. That's fine. <laughs> I think right. we talked about that that last podcast. Yeah. So what else we got? Speaking of controversy. Fucking Far Cry Five. I knew Ooh, it. I knew segue, it was gonna though. happen. Dude, people are dude. People, people are, so, are people are so soft and so white. <laughs> like, this has been done before, hasn't it? Some the, crazy this redneck American like religious stuff. Actually, Outlast, no. Outlast okay. Two. Outlast Two. Yeah, most recent, but and but Outlast Two was like. Like, what blows my mind is, like, there wasn't even a controversy around Outlast 2, and Outlast 2 was fucking controversial in its content. It Outlast was a- is also still... We enjoy it, and it's a very good game, but I feel like a lot of people still aren't aware of Outlast. I don't know how many people have no idea what Outlast is, and yeah. I don't show them. But, it's, but still, like, just to bring it to the same thing, like... So, I guess to bring light on the topic, so they released a... It was... I guess it's cover art or a screenshot mm-hmm. of yeah. what the game basically like about far cry 5 and it's going to be in like rural montana but in the screenshot it shows like these like a bunch of white dudes with beards and they have like a table it's kind of like a, a last supper kind of setting and they have an american flag with like crosses on it instead of stars mm-hmm. and then there's like a church with the same symbol in the background but then it shows like these guys with a bunch of guns and shit and then there's a guy tied up in front of the table and it has sinner written across his back so it's like it has like very religious like overtones I see nothing wrong with it. Me neither. I mean, either. I re- like, the thing is, we've done so many, like, first-person shooter games where you're in different countries shooting fucking, foreign foreign enemies. I like, mean, look at the fucking Call of Duty game where you literally had to shoot up an airport. Exactly. And you did that, uh, like... Somebody left that comment. was years ago. Whoa. Big wall of text. I don't even... People are made about it from both the left and the right. Left mad because they're nothing. Okay, so basically he was saying how, like, people are going to be mad 
for whatever reason, whether it's the whole like religious thing or you know uh, them being white, things like that. Yeah, I, it, it's definitely like a. I just think it's kind of dumb, like the things that people pick to be controversial, like 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 upset about. Yeah. Um, especially since like, um, are you familiar, like Jody? Are you familiar at all with the Outlast Two story? Nope. Basically, you get dropped off in this area where there's, there, there's like there's this religious zealot who basically convinces everybody that he's God. And then he just, he, Im, he rapes and impregnates all the women and then murders the unborn baby inside them. Like, that's basically the premise of the entire game. And so the entire game is basically about how, like, there's this, like, like everybody's brainwashed and, like, they just wake up out of sleep, like, with sexual lust and they just rape and kill each other constantly. Yeah, it's... And yet people are upset about controversial Christians. Yeah. Now, there, I mean, there's only one game that I've seen that, like, there was a lot of controversy, uh, was actually rated for adults only. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is kind of recent. I don't San remember Andreas. the name of the game. I don't remember the name of the game. No, Man, it was not two. San Andreas. It was a game where you play as this guy who's literally, his only goal is to kill as many innocent people as possible. Uh, I, Are you talking it, about uh, It's like that black hatred? and white looking game. Wait, what? Hatred? Yes, Hatred. That was the name of the game. I remember. Uh, I remember seeing that. That's the only one that I've ever seen, like, an actual issue with. When you play games like, like, Grand Theft Auto, like, you have the option to go and kill innocent bystanders if you want. Yeah, it's not the premise of the game. It's not the the premise of the game. Uh, Not to say that, like, GTA is a good Christian game, but, you know, (laughs) like, the option is there. It's not like that's your primary goal. Yeah. With hatred, like, you're just killing people. Like, that's your one objective is to kill as many people as possible. And I, I could see that being controversial and that being, like, an issue with people. At the same time, you it's don't fucking, have to play it. It's a fucking yeah. video game. It's no one's forcing, oh, no, I have to play Hatred now. Like, no, nobody's doing that. Dude, speaking of controversy, I was literally reading yesterday. Um, so they're, they're releasing the new, the recreation of the It movie. Oh, yes. Um, That's true. And there was a, big, a lot of controversy around it because apparently in the book, there's a fucking, like, like, preteen orgy that happens in mm-hmm. the book yep. and so there's a big controversy about like because nobody because they haven't talked about it at all in any of the teasers for the movie so a lot of people are like i wonder if it's going to be in the movie i really hope it's not in the movie some people are like i do hope it's in the movie because it's integral to the story like things like that and so it wasn't like, have you ever seen the old stephen king no i haven't watched like i watched the old it but like i watched it when i was like eight so okay. i don't remember anything it, about it. They, it was originally done as a miniseries and then they released it later as a full package kind of deal yeah it was like four vhs's yeah um <laughs> anyways uh dude it's like there's fucking there's titanic no, being a two tape movie there's no orgy scene in that one either yeah I, I knew that i i was reading i was reading the forums and like the articles and stuff about it and a lot of people were saying that they really hope it's not in it because it wasn't in the original adaptation of the book and all that i think Okay, so here's my thing on this. I think there are certain things that work in books that don't work in film. Mm -hmm. And I think something like a preteen orgy is a little too taboo for film. You know, I think think if they're going to do anything about it, Maybe allude to the fact that that happened. And that's what I was going to say. But you don't have to show it. I was going to say, they can't show it because that's that's child pornography at that point. But I will say, like, one of the big controversies about it is, like, a lot of people are like, obviously you don't want to show it, but a lot of people are like, man, it's a really important the important part of the story, so let's... I think that they should at least allude to the fact that it, it happened or exactly. it was going to happen. And I will agree with that. I think mm-hmm. that if it's something that's important to the story and it's an important key plot, like, there's nothing wrong with alluding to that. Yeah. Now, I've, re- I've never read the book. I haven't either. So, I don't know how important a preteen orgy is. It's well, I, I re- Whenever I was reading through the article and stuff, a lot of people were explaining why it's important to mm-hmm. it, and it did seem important from what they were talking about. Okay. Because I don't really know the story to it at all. Like, uh, at okay. all, so. So, you, you brought up the thing about child pornography. If mm-hmm. it's a bunch of adults portraying preteens... Is it still considered? It's not adults. They're actual kids. Like if you've seen, okay. if you've actually yeah, looked they're, they're all kids. and okay. seen the um, the uh, fucking the like the fucking trailer for it, it's very obvious that it is um, kids. Okay. Well, then that answers my question. Also, before we get too far off the topic of controversy, I actually think the Far Cry Five direction they're going, like with the whole. 
mm. crazy cultist thing, I think it's going to be a great change of pace. Yeah. I do give them I give them credit <laughs> or credit to do since Far Cry 4, I think they realized, okay, we do need to change it up a little bit. So they did Primal, which was neat cuz that was just like some caveman shit. Yeah, which was that fantastic. was new. Yeah. Uh and then now uh, they're doing this redneck stuff, which is I'm totally down for. I, but I think it also is because it hits close to home for us because we're in, like, Redneck <laughs> County. Yeah. And so, like, ha that's my cousin right there. <laughs> All I gotta say is the main character better be Redneck as fuck, too. So you're just a Redneck dude killing a bunch of Rednecks. It'd be awesome. What if you're, like, some super liberal Ford. Democrat? <laughs> <laughs> or what if you're the foreigner? Mm. I mean... The plot twist. You, well, you, you, they kind of did that in Assassin's Creed 3 whenever you played as a Native American... Like oh. killing a bunch of white guys. Oh. As, a, as a side yeah. note, Aaron points out, uh, nothing is worse has a worse record for movies than movies based off games. I'm trying to say, did we did we talk about? Were we talking about? I just realized I don't think we were talking about. It what? took me a little while to understand. Yeah. What, okay. Like the Assassin's Creed movie. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. Like I was. I had high hopes for it too. I was like, "Fucking Michael Fassbender's in that thing." And I heard it was poo poo. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard, heard it was poo poo as well. And I was like, "Oh, poor Michael." Um, so, I have one more topic I want to talk about, and it's the Nintendo Switch stuff. <laughs> Jacob says, "As long as I can scream Murica in it, I'll buy." <laughs> I mean, you can always you can scream Murica right now. now and get the <laughs> the Murica taunt, <laughs> the, the Murica emote. <laughs> Rains McDonald's Just pull cheeseburgers a out of the flag sky. out of your ass. <laughs> Start waving it. What <laughs> anyways going, Alex? Um. So, Nintendo, I guess they sh- they released the schematic for how you can do voice chat for games now. <laughs> and so, basically, to do that now, you have to have a headset. You have to have a phone. Mm. You have to have the Switch, and then you have to have this like weird device that allows the three devices to connect and have like a weird threesome with each other doesn't it look like an inkling is that what they said yeah it, it looks like an inkling from from splatoon it, it looks like a little fucking squid and it's like literally just fucking like wires and devices everywhere just you give to, them a headset like. like like exactly like in normal society you take your headset plug it into the device and you're fine but now you have to have a phone connect to the internet and connect to a specific account then you have to have a a device that you connect your phone to, connect your switch to, and then connect your headset to to fucking voice chat. Okay. What the hell? It is a lot. I will say the one positive about it is for those parents who like to like kind of parental control their ch- kids talking on the internet with a bunch of trolls. Yeah, but your kids can still say ass and titties if they well, want. The thing is, they have to come and like, hey, can I use the phone to voice yeah, chat with my friends? You actually and need to whole use a whole other device. To yeah, so that. like, okay. you can give them the phone and like, it, it's just it's another like step in parental control. Yeah, nowadays, that's like the one like, positive though. Well, I will say another positive that could be looked at is that um, I can see that if you're running like chat software and stuff inside the Switch, it can kind of bog down the software and the game. So if you're using an external device to host chatting. Um, for the game, uh, it won't bog down the internet connection or the actual uh, specs of the thing. But at the same time, it's like, why not just use your phone? I would say, how exactly? Just run fucking Discord on your phone and right. just cut out the middleman. Don't even connect it to your Switch. <sighs> right. Uh, I don't know. I... Um, but I I will see that what you said is a good point because uh, Nintendo when they released the Switch, they released an app that parents can download on their phone to where you can actually plug in the the serial number, I think, of the Switch in it, and you can actually control parental controls of the Switch from your parent, from the parents from their phone, and actually control how long they can play it, and for how, like, how, like, what times of day they can play it, and all that stuff. Yeah. And the only thing is also, like, a lot of kids nowadays have their own phones already. True. So, I mean, that's just the kind of, like, I didn't get a phone until I was Man, 15, 16? I think I was 14 when I got my first yeah. phone. I was, I was 13. Yeah. I, I, was, I was 14 when I got my first phone, and it was my dad's old fucking Nokia brick. Yes. Yeah, Gross-ass phone. Dude, that thing was a monster, though. But you felt so cool having it, didn't you? Hell yeah, man. <clears throat> that was That's like, going to be my only when I was your age <laughs> statement. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, Back in my day, when Xbox I got, cost a nickel. <laughs> when I got my first phone, it was a Nokia flip phone, and I, I got my mom to order me this cool case for it. And it was like, it had lightning and shit on it. And I remember like, one of my friends saw it and he was like, dude, that's an awesome cell phone. And I was just like, yeah. And I was like the only one of my friends that had a cell phone. Mm-hmm. 
It was great. Can we just anyone remember the razor? Yeah. Yes. Who doesn't remember Good the three hundred dollar razor? But that shit was that the coolest thing with. ever. What the fuck? <laughs> it was. False I wanted one so bad. Everyone, man, like you were a cool kid if you had one yes. of those things, man. <laughs> like, ooh, he's got a razor. Especially if you had like a black one or a silver one, and you didn't have the regular blue. If it was like or the pink one. No, no. They had a pink, pink one. No. My brother had a razor. Steve. My had brother. A... My brother also had an all gold grill. <laughs> Steve had a. Uh, oh what? All gold grill. He had a. He had a gold. A gold. Your grill. brother? Yeah. Oh, dude, my brother's like ghetto as fuck. Holy shit. <laughs> Steve actually had a pink razor. I remember that. I do remember that. <laughs> How did that not happen to you? <laughs> because I'm not I'm not emotionally scarred like my brother. Oh, okay, never mind. Actually, I am. But that's besides the point. My brother also had his first kid when he was 18. That's a story for a different time. <laughs> my brother had his first kid when he was 18. Mm-hmm. So. But, yeah. Ha- have you ever razor. seen a picture of my brother? I'm he has, not. like, head to toe covered in tattoos. Like, oh, okay. He has more tattoo than he has empty skin. So yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> um, Awkward silence after empty skin, <laughs> right? Um, Jody. So that's all the that's all the general discussion that I have. Okay. Um, Jody, so. you have anything? I was just thinking about Alex's brother. I was just thinking about his empty skin. <laughs> um, so I already know what you're thinking about. So no. Um, let's let's start our E3 predictions. Oh, man! Dude. One of the things I want to do. I saw some my so, uh, guy that I follow on Tumblr. He said every year he makes an E3 bingo card. And I'm like, that's a fucking great idea. That's a great idea. idea. <laughs> like, of, of E3 predictions, it can be stuff that you either know that will be announced or things that you think will be announced. Yeah. And I think that's a fucking great idea. I think we should do an E3 bingo card. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Let's... I guess we can start with, like, individual companies. Yeah, that'll work. So, Bethesda. <sighs> okay. This is my wild card choice, but I think they're actually going to reveal something Elder Scrolls related. You think so? Yeah, like uh, like Elder Scrolls Six. There's a, there's rumors going around that they might be doing that, but also it's like rumors around E3 you have to take with like the biggest. The, yeah, exactly. That's why it's my wild card choice. Um, I think maybe a new IP. I don't know. So, well, supposedly like, that's confirmed. Uh, supposedly Bethesda's announcing a new IP. Oh, well, cool. Two new IPs. Oh, really? Well, then there you go. I don't know. I just, I, I know I heard something about they have, like, a new Wolfenstein or something coming out and a new... I'm saying, but that's not, like, a that's new not IP. That's not a new, new yeah. IP. Uh, but they have a new Evil Within and then the two new IPs and then Elder Scrolls 6 is, 6 is supposedly supposed to come out after that. Okay. Yeah, like it's it's funny because like there's so many rumors going around about Elder Scrolls Six because a lot of people are saying like oh they're gonna announce it but then supposedly Bethesda had said somewhere that they've barely even started development on it and that what they planned on doing with Elder Scrolls Six is similar to how they did with Fallout like they'll announce it right before they actually release it uh, okay. which was the best thing they could have ever done for Fallout Four. They've been working on it. Oh, probably so. Yeah, but it's done. I, I it's done. that I doubt. <laughs> it's just sitting. In the tr- <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just bed. sitting on it right now. I doubt that. It, dude, they worked on fucking, they worked on Fallout Four for like seven years. I will say, I th- you are absolutely correct. Having them announce Fallout Four and then have it be released the same year was amazing, dude. And like, that's like the perfect marketing strategy. That- Literally, they're like. Look at this awesome game we're developing. By the way, it comes out in three months. Yeah. Suck it, bitches. Like, and then on top of that, they were like, also, we have this awesome um, uh, phone game you can play. It's out right now. Go and download it. Yeah. With and, Fallout Shelter. And kudos to them for keeping that shit so tight-lipped. Right. Because that doesn't happen nowadays. No. Everything gets leaked. Everything. And Bethesda did a really good job of keeping that stuff contained. Dude, Bethesda, like, it will, just because of that, whenever that happened... They were my heroes. Like, that is a fantastic <laughs> marketing strategy. No, it was, uh, Especially since with, like, games like Scalebound, where they announce it, and then, like, three years later, they're like, oh, it's canceled. Mm-hmm. No, uh... Fucking Scalebound. I'm not gonna get me started on that. That's <laughs> all my predictions for Bethesda. I would say, uh, I really want them to announce a, the next Elder Scrolls, but I don't think they're gonna. Mm. If they do, I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised. To be honest, if they announce anything Elder Scrolls based, it's probably going to be the next expansion. The next, the next expansion for Elder Scrolls Online. 
It comes out this week. Elder Scrolls Mobile game. No, I mean game. the next one, the one after that. Yeah, I can see that. I, I think I think they're just gonna announce like, like maybe two games that are coming out. Like, cause I think they announced or said something about Evil Within two, and then I already forgot the other thing I said. Uh, and then oh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, and then they're probably gonna announce a new IP. I'm really interested. I wonder what they'll do with the new IP. All I gotta say is they're not pull no fucking Brink bullshit, right? Mm. But at the same time, it's like I don't think Bethesda was the sole developer. I think Bethesda just had their name on it. Kind of, yeah. s- okay. kind of similar with Rage. How Bethesda was technically behind it, but they didn't create it. It was it, it that yeah. made it. Okay. Um, because that, that happens quite a bit. Like Bethesda, like they will be the overseeing company, but they're not the primary developer of it. <coughs> um, Did anyone like Rage? It was okay. I, 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 I played a played chunk of it. I liked it. Yeah, it was all right. I didn't get to play a ton of it. I was super excited about it beforehand, but then like, like. I just fell off on the hype train. Mm. Um, now, lost my train of thought. Mm. Well, well then, <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Uh, let's see, Bethesda. Is there anything that I want Bethesda to do? I would think that they're gonna announce something Doom related, since the Doom game left on such a big cliffhanger. Oh man, if they give me another Doom, I'd be real happy. Boner inducing doom. Yeah, it's a good shooter, man. It was no, I I contemplate picking it up, and I'm not super big into first person shooters anymore. It was one of the best in years. I'll say like, that. Um, I was watching like some let's players play it, and it looked awesome. Like I was like, damn, like especially since the last one they put out was fucking Doom Three, and I was like, eh. Yeah, that one was very like. I liked the direction they went, where they went to, they went like um, like horror mm-hmm, with it, like survival horror kind of thing. And I did like that about it, but I was like, uh it's, it's whatever. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of that. Yeah. I like the fast-paced running gun mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's that's what makes Doom Doom, in my opinion. I like I, I get what you're saying. Like, I think it's cool that they try to shake it up, but it is it didn't shake it up in the right way for me. Yeah. Jody. <laughs> Doom. 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 That's a, that's a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> that's a game. That's, that's, that's a game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, what's EA. next? Yeah, I don't even fucking care. Y'all can do this one. <laughs> EA, where's my Dead Space 4? <laughs> New Mirror's Edge. No, nah, let Dead Space die. Dude, they pro- I don't think they're going to do another Mirror's Edge after... after New Mirror's after, Edge. After, after how Catalyst kind of tanked. Yeah. New yeah. Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge was a good idea, and they're like, okay, let's reboot the one game, and then they still didn't pull it off right. They're going to leave it alone. They're never touching it again. VR Mirror's Edge, then. That would be fucking awesome. You have piqued my interest. They're, 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 they're you gonna, have piqued my boner. <laughs> they're going to make Mirror's Edge VR compatible. Well, dude, supposedly they're going to be in, supposedly they're going to be announcing <laughs> the uh, Fallout Four VR experience this year <gasps> at E3. We're on EA, man. You should have said, said that. Dude, I just remember because you said VR. You bitch. I can't. I'm trying to like process that in my head, and my head's exploding. Dude, right a now. fall of VR Fallout would be fucking amazing yeah it'd be all right ah, shut no up. it would be amazing <laughs> you piece of trash <laughs> like i would be so down for that holy crap i'm up, i'm down for anything vr um dude me too i, I want to play farpoint what <laughs> it's a ps4 game that is released it's a vr game called farpoint oh. to shooter uh, i had no idea what you're saying apparently like, it's really well done um as far as like vr shooters go mm-hmm. uh it's, it's designed really well. Um, I was gonna have a review for it. it. Actually, looked really fun. But dude, one of the things. So there's two games I really want to see more about at E3. One of them is the um, the uh, the Quantic Dream <laughs> game that they're working on. Um, with the robot, the android yeah. guy who makes all the choices. Yes. I don't know. Oh I, yeah, 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 yeah. I like. I really like. Like after playing Heavy Rain. I, I just love the work that Quantic Dream puts out. Like, their stuff is, um, like, great. Did you ever play Beyond Two Souls? No, I never got a chance because I, I didn't have a PlayStation 4. Yeah, I I'm didn't starting to anything. not like those choice games. And the reason being, they give you the illusion that every choice you make will affect the game. But really, there's only, like, three major points that ever do. It just it depends on the game, though, because Heavy Rain actually had a lot of major game-changing choices. Mm-hmm. Like, did you play any Heavy Rain at I all? Played, yeah, I played the entire Heavy Rain. I um, saved everyone but one person. I played through the game 
four <laughs> times, and I got drastically different endings every single time. Mm. Um, the first two or three times, I killed, like, the first time I played, I killed three of the people in the last scene of the game. I was about to say, like, you remember the first time you beat it, you, you like, drastically failed, and the first time I beat it, I was like, oh, because I saw you do it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna save everybody, and I think I saved everybody besides the detective. Yeah. Dude, I was so pissed, because I killed everybody in the last, like, fucking, like, <laughs> in the last fucking five minutes of the game, I killed every single person except for one, except for fucking Madison Page. The, the one thing that killed me about that goddamn game was how many times they tried to say origami. The origami killer was my favorite. <laughs> the origami. So stupid. Yeah, from that fucking, the fucking Brooklyn FBI agent. Yeah. Dude, here's my favorite. The origami. And then he had a, dude, I, but I really liked like the character, like, like the character, um, building that they did for that game. Like, you play as an FBI agent who has a fucking drug addiction. Like, mm. that's, like, to me, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. it's kind of a taboo subject. Yeah. And then it's like, you have, like, you can kind of choose to give into his addiction, but at the end of the game, he does the, he, like, he, he gives in and does, like, some of the drug no matter what, so if you do it too many times, he overdoses that time. Yeah. Like, things like that's super cool to me. And then at the end of the game, whenever he's, like, if you, if you, um, a lot, like, if you save him, at mm. the end of the game, he fucking, um, he, like, because he uses that, like, the fucking virtual reality shit so much, like, he... Like, he doesn't realize that he's still in it, or, like, it starts to meld yeah. his two worlds together. Like, it's super cool to me. <clears throat> but no, I, I'm I'm really excited about that game. I'd say Heavy Rain, or, like, the Quantic Dream stuff are one of the better, like, story, like, choice-driven games. Also, Undertale. <clears throat> like, I was really surprised at, like, just, like, how much the decisions in Undertale ch- drastically changed the things that happened in the game. I still need to beat that. Um, but that's one game I really want to see more about. Mm. Also, I really want to see more about CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk. Um, game. Uh, the game is called like Cyberpunk twenty, 20 something. Yeah, twenty forty four or whatever. I really want to see more about that game. I just want to see CD Projekt Red do something. They could pump out a mobile game. I'll still buy it, dude. Like, like I hear the name CD Projekt Red and my my boner pokes through the other room. <laughs> it's a crazy boner you got there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that... All right, I am uh, the police. <laughs> seriously though, EA was probably like. We should just ignore that EA. Just ignore exists. EA. I don't care anymore. I really don't care. I mean, yeah, EA. They're gonna put some. They're gonna sports, sports, fucking sport ball. Yeah, sport ball game. And then they're gonna have some sports athlete come up and talk about it for twenty. Do you remember the E three conference when what's his tits Pele came up and. Gave us the fucking grandpa story for 30 minutes. And everyone was like, get off the stage, dude. <laughs> no one cares about your foosball. Oh, my God. Dude, I I am somewhat disappointed that um, Aisha Tyler isn't going to be a part of the... Um... Oh, her, we will miss her girlwood. Dude, I fucking love Aisha Tyler. Now she's, she's, she's okay. Dude, she fucking plays Lana in, um, in Archer. I don't watch Archer. Then fuck you. You're missing out on something awesome. <laughs> I'm watching Rick and Morty right now. Archer's man. like one of my favorite TV series ever. I love Archer. Dude, I love Aisha Tyler. She's fantastic. Um, and she plays in Criminal Minds. That's awesome. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, detectives. <laughs> uh, no, dude. CD Projekt Red. I fucking need Cyberpunk. EA, I think they're going to announce something Plants vs. Zombies based. I think they're going to announce NBA 2K18. I mean, do they really announce those games anymore, though? <laughs> right. I, I mean, like you, do. you know it's gonna come out. <laughs> yeah. Like you know it's coming. That, that's like that's like an Assassin's Creed or a Call of Duty. You don't wait for an announcement. You just know it's gonna come out. Yeah. You just wait to get on the internet one day and see a release date. Actually, EA doesn't even do the NBA games, do they? Like Two K does. Yeah, yeah that's 2K. true. Matt, they do. They do Madden and FIFA, I think. Yeah, EA does Madden and FIFA. I just assumed EA did all the sports balls. Uh, you're not completely wrong. Yeah. Um, the only ones that matter. I would say I would. I'm actually gonna be interested to see what Ubisoft is gonna do, um, because they obviously announced Far Cry Five, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I was about to say new Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed. There, um, it, the whole thing is gonna be. Assassin's I think Creed. they're gonna announce something for um, for Wildlands. Ugh, because that's doing well. Dude, Wildlands is doing really well actually. Wildlands is one of the top grossing games of the year so far. Top grossing, but are they, it's, is it holding people's attention? I, I think so. 
Like I, th- I mean, the only reason I'm not playing it is because I don't have anybody to play with. I, I'm working on it. I got a promotion. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to come and play with you now. I can actually afford it. <laughs> um, oh, man. Uh, man, Ubisoft. Obviously, Assassin's Creed. I feel like that they're going to... I don't want them to, but I feel like they might announce something Watch Dogs based. You don't want them to? No, because it's too soon. What do you mean it's too soon? Wildlands just came out. Watch Dogs. I know, but what I'm saying is you were talking about Watch Dogs, and yeah. you think they're going to release something soon. That was even sooner. No, but I mean, for Wildlands, not a new Wildlands game. I mean a Wildlands DLC. Not DLC. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So you, because you think so they new. might announce a Watch Dogs 3 or something? I, I have a feeling that they might. Um, I don't... Like I said, I don't want them to, but I'm just trying to think of any like recent Ubisoft games. I also feel like that they might try to work on a Division 2. They need to. Because Division's been out for a few years Division's now. Division's actually like an interesting game. It's just some stuff needs to be like fixed on it. I would say him and I played a lot of it. Like We played mm-hmm. like 100 and something hours into it. I, I actually wouldn't mind if they, they announced a new Division... Like, it would kind of suck because we never got to do all the stuff in the first one, but I think it'd be nice to have a fresh start yeah. to Division. I, I do, too, because one of the things that sucks is, like, they started changing so much stuff with Division. Is like, every time we go in, we're like, we had no idea, like, half of our shit, like, the specs, like, the stats on them changed, like, half of our buffs changed. We'd have to, like, like the gear that was super awesome when we played last time, when we got on, was all, all poo-poo. Mm-hmm. And so we had to get all new gear. Like, that was one of the frustrating <laughs> things about it. Yeah. Um, I did like that they, they updated the replayability of Division. Like, yeah. they made it a lot m- more worthwhile to replay it over and over again. Mm-hmm. And they made it a lot easier for it to be, like, to hold your attention. Mm-hmm. But. I also like playing those games like that before they start shitting out DLC. Yes. Because it, like. If you can, if you can play a game when it's still, like, before all the DLC comes out. And you can get to that end point and get a good set of gear. And, like, this is kind of for MMOs, too. Like, get you good gear and get yourself set up to where you're, like... I don't want to say, like, the top player or one of the top players. But when you're, like, Mm in-game, that way when the DLC comes out, you don't have to try and catch up to all this bullshit. Yeah. You're, like, pretty much right there. So, like, all you gotta do is, like, you're good. You're just, like, all right, I just gotta get the new weapons and the new armor. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, that's why I feel like a new Watch Dogs would be... I mean, a new uh, Division Division would be pretty fun. I did, too. Like, I, I would enjoy it. I I feel like that we're kind of at that cycle, though, where they might announce, like, at least working on the Division. Because Ubisoft is also one of the companies where they will announce a game a few years before they release it. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, uh, the Division was announced quite a few years mm-hmm. before it was released. I, th- I believe it was announced... Two or three years. It was, it was it, announced the, the year that they announced uh, the Xbox One and PlayStation exactly. 4. Exactly. Which is 2013. The I think graphics it didn't come looked out. way better when they announced it too. Well, to be honest, we played on PC. The graphics on PC were fantastic. Okay, they were great. Also, they made it seem like you could totally stab the party members in the back. Yeah, yeah. But you can't. You can't. It doesn't well, work. Unless you're in the dark zone. I would say I think that's what it was. Is like they. Con- I think that they ch- the initial concept for the game that they announced was a mixture of the dark zone into the actual game. And then they secluded it into its own area, which I'm actually glad they did because yep. I didn't like the Dark Zone. I, I'm not a PvP kind of guy. No, Dark Zone makes me ragey. Look, you want to <laughs> kill me? Fine. Don't take my shit that I worked for. Are you kidding me? No. I don't know. Like, I'm very on the fence about stuff like that. Like, I think it's really cool to be, like, always looking over your back and always, like, is somebody going to fucking, like, come up behind me and... and just fucking gun me down. But I also hate having to look over my shoulder and being like, is somebody going to fucking gun me down? Right? Because, like, the Dark Zone can be fun sometimes, but sometimes you need to, like, you can't... If the whole game was the Dark Zone, then it'd be like, no. Like but My problem is, is that when you're in that PvP area, all the weapons and stuff are unbalanced. Yeah. So, if you got somebody who's got, like, the fucking, like, exotic sniper rifle or whatever, and clearly play too much Destiny, but if you got somebody who's got, like, the super rare sniper rifle with, like, high damage impact and stuff like that, you're gonna go down in, like, one hit if you got some shitty weapon. You know what I mean? You get what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's all in balance, and I hate that. How do you ever get to the top when there's someone, like, always there that's better than you, like, just waiting to shoot you? 
I don't know. Stuff like that frustrates me. We got we actually we we got to a point where we were doing pretty decent in the dark zone. Yeah, I think it was mostly because we were a group. And yeah, and we were smart about yeah. how we approached things. Yeah, and there's not really a whole lot of groups in the dark zone. There's a whole lot of single people, and if you're a single person, you're pretty stupid if you attack a group. Well, one of the things that I I actually really liked about the dark zone is the tension that you would have whenever you were at a drop zone trying to uh, yeah. extract your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, that tension was actually really fun. Like, like, like everybody hiding behind something, just waiting just for like, the rope, just like... <laughs> yeah. And then as soon as you got me, you're like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just run away. <laughs> Dude, like, the fact that they added the, the ability to, like, cut the rope, I was just like, that is fucking great. They <laughs> added that? Yes. Yeah, like, you, if somebody goes to extract their stuff, you can go and cut the rope to where their shit doesn't get extracted. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst. I will Dude, say. Dude, that, that tension, though, is, like, great. I, I like... I've never experienced tension like that in a game in a long time. Yeah. Like, they're, they're always, like, that, that fucking Mexican standoff type exactly. shit. Yeah. It was pretty funny because me and Alex had, like, two drop zones. That we always went to. That we always went to that we had, like, the perfect defense. So if anybody was going to, like, try and kill us and take our stuff right before the, the drop got there, we were just like, you ain't getting us, dude. Yeah, there was one that was next to a truck that we'd hide in the bed of. Um, and you can see all around you, and there was no adva- no vantage points to where you can get see inside the truck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was the other one where that was like that medical tent yeah. with like a few boxes inside that we would hide behind, and then like I would deploy like those like standalone um, barriers that I would hide behind, and we just hide in there. And the only way that we would get fucked is if someone would have threw a grenade in there, but they never did. I don't think anybody was smart enough to do that, right? Because I didn't think about that until just now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, E3. Um, all right, so who else? Nintendo. Nintendo. Nintendo is going to show off ARMS. Uh, Arm, I mean, ARMS comes out like I think we're going to get. I think we're going to get legit gameplay footage of Mario Odyssey. Yes. Um, I think they're going to show off DLC for the Breath of the Wild. Well, th- did the Breath of the Wild DLC already come out? They, well, they showed off the costumes, but isn't there, like, a story-driven thing, too? That I don't know. I don't think the first DLC is anything story-driven. I think it just adds, like, um, some extra stuff. Like, it adds, like, a New Game Plus feature where you can actually up the difficulty of everything. Oh, okay. And adds, like, a a waypoint system where you can actually place a single fast travel waypoint at a time anywhere in the map. Mm -hmm. And it also shows everywhere that you've walked. Um, You can play back and see everywhere that you've walked so you can go back and explore places you know you haven't explored before. Gotcha. Um, okay. And they added, I think, a few other features as well. They added, oh yeah, they added a, um, it was a, a game trial where it's like 40, um, 40 uh, dungeon kind of thing. And once you beat it, it permanently awakens the Master Sword. Oh, cool. So they added a few things like that. I think the first one's most like extra features. The second one's actually going to be story driven stuff. Okay. Um,. You know what I wish Sony... I mean, not Sony. Nintendo had the rights to. I want fucking Rayman. I want, like, another 3D that, that's, adventure that's Ubisoft. Rayman. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is Ubisoft. Give me another Rayman. Like Dude, a 3D Rayman adventure. Legends and Rayman Legends and Rayman Origins Those are were good, so fun. But I want a 3D Rayman again. Oh. I, I like... Like, the side- Rayman 2 and 3, or... I don't know. I love them. And see, I liked the side-scroller Raymans, because I got... I played the original Rayman on PlayStation that mm-hmm. was side scroll and I really liked that. So I like the side-scroller ones. I feel that. Um, but I'm not I'm not on VN for another Rayman. I don't really give a shit about it. I feel like that Nintendo is probably going to announce their next Pokemon game at E3. I want it on Switch. And that, yeah. It has to be on Switch. A Pokemon Switch game. I think they're going to announce the game... The- the virtual GameCube console. Yes, I do too. I think they're going to announce the vir- the virtual console for GameCube. Which, I will be severely upset if Twin Snakes is not on that virtual console. They will probably add it eventually. Like, See, I want... I, I want. will probably fucking sell my Switch and like fucking back out of Nintendo forever if Twin Snakes is not on Ooh. the fucking virtual console. That's strong feelings. Yeah, right? See, I really want... I want Four Swords. I feel like the Switch is perfect for a Four Swords oh, game. Oh, yeah. Cool. Jacob says, uh, Jacob says a Luigi based game would be nice to see. Oh, kind of like Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, like there's been a while. I've seen one of those. It those has. are actually really good. They were. Um, I feel like that they're gonna announce another Mario game. I know that for sure. They're gonna. 
Especially another side-scrolling Mario, because they haven't announced one for the Switch yet. <laughs> new Super Mario Maker. <laughs> the, 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 new, the new Super Mario Waker, Maker Waker Switch version Quaker. 2.0. Um, <laughs> no, I think that the two games I want to see on the GameCube would be um, Four Swords and Crystal Chronicles. Honestly, I feel like GameCube didn't have enough games. I say GameCube did not have enough games. So I feel like they could put every single GameCube game on there, and it wouldn't be too much. They need a new Animal Crossing for Switch. Bruh, if I they would, announce an Animal Crossing at E3... I would die. I would lose my shit. Dude, and then you and I would lose weeks of our life again. Yes. I, and I would have to go around to everybody's... Hey, man, you got Animal Crossing? Look, what fruit you got? Oh, man. Apples? All I right, cool. Let me, let me get some apples, dude. Look, I got, I got peaches. You can get these peaches. And you go and cut down all their trees. You're like, ha-ha, sucker. <laughs> I got two words. Trauma center. Trauma center. Is that really what you're wanting? Trauma center? <laughs> trauma center. Good, <laughs> you man. You piece of trash. <laughs> 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 Fucking trauma center. Oh, my God. Or wait. Cooking mama. <laughs> dude, I would play the fuck out get of Cooking here. Mama. On the Switch. Have you seen that YouTube channel, the guy who makes the Cooking Mama recipes, exactly how it's done in the game? Really? Yeah, and then compares them. A lot of times they come out pretty dope. That's actually interesting. I like that concept. Yeah, it's called uh, Cooking with Cooking Mama. Dude. It's really interesting. <laughs> That's great. What well, one game that I would actually really like to see. Okay, never mind. This isn't Nintendo. I'll hold off on that one. Um, <laughs> so, Nintendo. See, I, I just really want like some remakes of games I really enjoyed. Like, I want to... S- Metroid! Metroid. Can we have that? I just thought about that. <laughs> it's Nintendo, so no, you can't have it. Uh, wh- Why would you just sit on that IP? I will say, if it's another first-person shooter Metroid, I will not be hype at all. If it's a side-scroller Metroid, then I will be hype about it. I want a it. sequel to Other M. I'm just kidding. No, I don't. Fuck that game. <laughs> yeah, because Metroid Prime was like the last like good one. Because uh, I... Because they recently... I say recently, it was probably about a year ago, they released Super Metroid on the virtual console on the DS. Mm-hmm. And I started playing it, and that game is fucking fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of like... Because I remember playing it as a kid and not having no idea what the fuck was going on. But playing it now, I like kind of have an idea what's going on. And it's a whole lot of like checking your map and backtracking and being like, how do I get here? Like I need to Backtracking get- does frustrate me a little bit. But the, I feel like, like it's a lazy yeah. kind of thing. But Metroid does it pretty pretty well to where, like, even if you're backtracking for a specific thing, you may backtrack and get something you missed, mm-hmm. like a weapon upgrade or health upgrade or something. So it's not completely... Yeah. It's not completely like, oh, shit. That's why I don't mind it too much with the Metroid games, but just the concept of backtracking yeah. in general kind of, like, irks me. Um. No. Fuck, I lost my train of thought again. Sorry. Every goddamn time. It was a Nintendo game. It's because Eric's playing it with your fidget spinner. No. It was because I didn't get engrossed in what you're saying and then I completely lost track of what I was going <laughs> to say. Uh, shit. Well, obviously it wasn't important, so. Clearly not. Shall we move on to Microsoft? Let's move on to Microsoft. I would say Microsoft Halo 6. Uh huh. Halo 6. They're, they're going to announce a Halo. Um,. They're I'd actually be okay with that because now you can play it on PC. I'm gonna get the new Halo on PC. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say that um, they're going to talk details and price about the Scorpio, and they're gonna give an actual name to it because Project Scorpio is still the project code name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So remember when the Connect was called Project Natal? Yes. And for the Switch, it was NX. Yeah. For the GameCube, it was Dolphin. For the Wii, it was um, Revolution. Was it really? Revolution? Yeah, it was the Nintendo Revolution. Um, Not wrong though. Jesus Christ, thing blew up. Yeah, so it's like I, I, I always like those like project names, but they're gonna probably. I don't think they're gonna keep Scorpio as the name. They're gonna they're gonna actually give it its official <laughs> name at E three. It's gonna be the Xbox Zero. The Xbox Three Thousand. Xbox Zero. The Xbox One Two Point Zero. No, <laughs> that hurts me. <laughs> they're they're gonna go the way of Apple through the Xbox One Plus, uh, Xbox One Eighty, but it's gonna be like the word one and then eighty. <laughs> 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 
so uh, the sweet. Xbox One and One Half. <laughs> Um, uh, no, so I, they're going to announce a name, they're going to announce price, and they're going to talk about more specific details, because they did spec release, but they still haven't talked about the console in detail. Isn't it kind of like, basically, the new 3DS? No, it's like, significantly upgraded from the Xbox One. Okay. Like, it's virtually a whole new console. Like, it's about... But what I'm getting at is, like, it's still an Xbox One. Yes. But... Super upgraded, and like there's gonna be Scorpio games that you can only play on the Scorpio, but you can't play on the Xbox One. Yes, but you can still play Xbox One games on the Scorpio. Yes. Okay, so it's basically the new 3D. Yes. Like whenever you say it that way, yes. And the reason they're doing that is because the Scorpio is going to have native 4K, not 4K upresing. And so because of that, they're going to be releasing all new games that can take f- that they can actually publish that are 4K games on disc. So because of that, they won't be able to be played on the Xbox One. But Xbox One games can be up to 4K on the um, on the Scorpio. Microsoft's going to announce a VR headset. Well, supposedly the Scorpio is going to allow third-party headsets like the Oculus and the Vive. That was something they announced like a year ago. Well, also, that would Microsoft, be dope. Also, right? Microsoft was working on HoloLens, which is an AR. Yes. But... I haven't heard anything about that in a while. Like they had that demo where they were playing Minecraft. Wait, yeah. what was it? Hollow it was called Lens. Hololens. I thought that was a thing already. Like mm-hmm. I thought they were. They're they're, they're still kind of they're still kind of working on it. Dude, speaking of the Hololens, I remember whenever you and I were in high school. I remember I was in Ms. Heinen's BCA class, and I stumbled upon a video on YouTube. It was back like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and there was a, um, there was a video that showed up for a new Microsoft IP. Pro, uh, like a project called Microsoft Surface. Talking about the table? The table. Yes. That was fucking awesome. It was. That and needs then, to be a thing. And then it turned into the fucking like tablets that they released, like the Microsoft <sighs> Surfaces, because Caitlin has one. Dude, like I remember that so vividly, and I was like, that's fucking cool. Yes. I remember Tooth Tunes. That was the shit. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Dude, the about. table. <laughs> brush with the music. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I was like, what? Gotta have my, my Hannah Montana teeth songs. <laughs> but, dude, that table was like, it was basically a table that was or a screen on a table. And it was interactive, but you can do cool shit. Like, you can place your phone on it, and it will automatically pull up all the photos on your phone and throw them out on the table. And then and somebody you else could, could put, transfer. Yeah, you, somebody else could put their phone on the oh, table, and you can drag awesome. them. Yeah. And then there was the functionality where, like, a restaurant could have one, and whenever you go to pay, you you layered credit card on there, and you'll charge your credit card from the screen top of the table, and you can actually choose a tip like with it, and automatically charge it and stuff. And you can actually do like uh, transfer money to other people's credit cards and stuff, and or they lay them on the table and stuff. Like the functionality was super fucking cool, but they never released it. Yeah. But then again, whenever you think about it, that technology was way ahead of its time back in two thousand seven. Who knows, man? They could still be working on it. They might be, but it's I really not hope Microsoft Surface anymore. I really hope they are working on it. Right? I would. That'd be fucking dope, dude. I would um, totally have one. Like, they had so much cool functionality with that. Um, but yeah, so Microsoft, they're going to announce another Halo. To be honest, like, I think this E3 is going to be a very, very integral turning point for Microsoft as a gaming company. Mm-hmm. As a technology company, I think they're doing fine. Like, Microsoft releases really good technology and and stuff. But I think this is going to be an integral E3 for their gaming division. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, with as much as Sony has been pushing out like these these AAA titles and stuff, I feel like Microsoft has to perform very well at this mm-hmm. E3. If they don't, they are going to lag very far behind. Sony's E3 conference last year was the best conference I've seen in years. It was Supposed- amazing. Supposedly, um, there was people tweeting out, like people who are, are setting up for E3 and like, who are behind the scenes for E3 and saying like, the lineup for Sony's E3 is going to be the best E3 in history this year. What? Supposedly. Talking some... Some big talk there. Um, so I'm I'm very curious because this will probably be the year that's going to be the turning point if I keep my Xbox One or if I trade it in for a PS4 or whatever. Yeah. Because one of the things that I was talking to Caitlin about is I've been contemplating trading in both of our Xbox Ones towards a Scorpio mm-hmm. whenever it comes out. Just because like I don't play mine. I actually took it off my desk. It's not even on my desk anymore. Um, it's not even plugged in right now. Oh, shit. And so... Um, <coughs> I w- Caitlin still plays her- the Xbox religiously, and so I feel like it would be beneficial for us to get a Scorpio because that's that's something that she's always going to want to stay a part of. 
But I've been wanting to get a PlayStation 4 for years. I just haven't had really the funds or the time to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so trading in my Xbox One towards a PlayStation 4 would be the other option. So depending on what they announce for the Scorpio and, and the Xbox is going to depend on if I keep my Xbox One or if I go and get a PlayStation 4. You should just get a PS4 anyways. I'm probably going to get one eventually. Um, but... Um, Your mallet, sir. Um, I'm going to get one eventually. I just haven't decided when because there are some games like the fucking game that's by quantic dream mm -hmm. i want to play that all right so let's wrap this up sony i need i'm not saying they're gonna do this but i need this i need gameplay footage of that new spider-man game really dude <laughs> no, no no i i'm not even kidding i love the spider-man games uh some of them are way better than others, but I remember Spider Man Two for the PlayStation Two. That yeah, game that's fantastic. that one. That one and Ultimate Spider Man will forever be like my favorites. But this new Spider Man looks real it, amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Kojima's gonna have a spot. He's gonna show us some more of Death, Death Stranding. This is gonna be another confusing trailer. It's gonna be another confusing trailer. It's gonna be an, it's gonna be another fucking <laughs> but, college art project. But it's gonna lead into gameplay. Mm. Like it'll be one of like the fucking remember the kept you waiting Metal Gear Ground yeah. Zero shit and it goes right into the gameplay. It'll be uh, one of those. Yeah, I think it's about time for some gameplay. So he might show a little bit of gameplay, but there's still gonna be no release date or oh, no God, release no. year. Yeah, no. He's gonna be like expect it and then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> expect it before you <laughs> die, maybe. <laughs> Death Stranding will be a PS5 exclusive. And then he walks away. No, it's going to be a PS8 exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> That's my prediction for Sony. The, the Stranding, yeah. I, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to make a ballsy... I'm going to make a very ballsy um, prediction. Sony's going to announce an updated console. Yeah. I think so. I th Sony likes to compete with Microsoft. And with Microsoft releasing the Scorpio this year, especially with how powerful the Scorpio is going to be, mm -hmm. Sony will not want to be behind in the game. They're going to announce an updated console. I'm going to make a bold statement. PlayStation VR price drop. I'm going to go one step further. Whole new PS VR. Updated headset. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with Alex on this. I think they're going to release really? a new headset that is cheaper. I, w I would say a new updated headset hmm. that's going to that's going to be a different way that it connects to the PlayStation or a different way that it tracks. Because good lord. And there's a lot of wires going on in that fucking thing. I got real good at unhooking and un and hooking that thing up because I'd bring it to friends' houses and stuff. I got real good at that. <laughs> Him and I got really good set up the vibe. Yeah. yeah, take me like five minutes tops. But yeah, I, I think they're gonna announce a new a new new version of the headset. I also I don't know if if HTC or if Valve is going to be any part of E3, but I'm willing to bet that they're gonna um, announce an updated Vive or at least updated Vive parts. Look, Half Life Three in VR. Um. It's not gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna disagree with you there. You don't think so? I don't think I don't think they're gonna do I don't think they're gonna do an updated headset for a while. I think it's pure pure rumors. Mostly because they would have to it would only be upgraded hardware. But I don't know, I just see because I think they would drop the price in it before they announced a new one. Okay. And that's just how I feel. Also, I think they're gonna have actual release dates for the audio head trap thing that's coming out and their new external tracker the what Cause, cause it's it's this weird thing that like <laughs> you can oh i know what you're talking yeah. about that you can attach to things yeah i okay. saw that that's weird yeah basically it's, it's like for games where you have a physical object in your hand like a game where you have a baseball bat uh -huh. there's a tracker you could put that at the end of an actual baseball bat and it uh, tracks it oh okay and, you can, yeah. and you can attach it to kind of anything <laughs> like, man if, those if, those uh, fail videos are gonna blow up <laughs> Uh, or you can attach it to a camera and uh -huh. do like uh, this mixed reality thing when you're filming somebody playing on a green screen. It'll mm -hmm. track the camera. Oh, cool. So I would say I want to go back to Nintendo for a second because I just remembered I need to carry on the spirit of Josh Lacombe and say that they need to announce a fucking Pokemon Snap, even though they're not going to for Nintendo. Oh, Pokemon yes, Chanel. please. Pokemon, Pokemon Chanel. Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that stuck. Yeah, but <laughs> Pokemon Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Dolce and Gabbana. 
<laughs> Got that Pokemon Michael Kors. <laughs> Wait, do you want Pokemon Dolce or Dol- Pokemon Gabbana? <laughs> That's the new one. Oh my god. <laughs> And, and it's not even about capturing Pokemon. It's you have a Pokemon, and it's about getting different outfits for them. Yep. <laughs> Why is it not a Pokemon thing? Michael Kors? There you go. <laughs> but then there's like the there's the Louisiana version, which is Pokemon Michael Kors Light, and they just get drunk on Kors Light. <laughs> Pokemon Meshe. <laughs> Pokemon Meshe. <laughs> the Pokemon Meti <laughs> The new fucking Pokemon's is a cayenne pepper. <laughs> No, it's the, it's the Pokemon Tatas. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, damn. Weird. I need, okay, like, real talk, though, back to Sony. I want a God of War release date. Or new footage, just something God they of War. Have, they have to announce a release date for this year. <clears throat> that footage That is the was other game beautiful. that makes me want to pick up a PlayStation 4, because I actually really liked the God of War series mm-hmm. a whole lot. Um, Man. God of War 3 was fantastic. God of War 3. The, I will never, like... The Poseidon boss fight, definitely top three boss fights. Dude, ever. my dude, fuck that Zeus fight. It took Zeus me forever to beat Zeus. Yeah, he's tough at the end. And then, but also, I forget. I think it's Kronos. I think it's Kronos that you fight. The really, really huge one. You like yeah. pull out his fingernail. That one. Ah, good. dude, no. One, <laughs> one of my favorite boss deaths was whenever you fought fucking Vulcan and you rip his head off and use it as a flashlight for the rest of the <laughs> yeah. game. Like what the. <laughs> And one of the crazy things is every time you pull it out, you would hear the head scream and be uh-huh. like, ah! yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Is Konami going to be a D3? Fuck Konami. Who uh, cares? Square Enix. Uh, Jacob made a comment earlier. I didn't talk about it initially because I wanted to get to it, but he said, hopefully we'll get a new trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. They'd already we'll annou- be lucky if we get Final Fantasy 7 footage. They already announced that neither one of those games are going to come out before 2020, I think. That's insane, dude. That is insane. I don't even know why they even announced them if they're not even going to come out for another fucking three years. I don't know either. Uh, please refer to our last podcast about our shitstorm of, of John shitting all over Square Enix for an hour. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I got. Yep, I'm done too. Jody? Jody, any more predictions? No. I, I'm going to say, like, my my outland... I got, Oh, yeah, everyone pick a crazy game that you want to see. No, I'm, I'm not going to do a crazy game. I'm already going to throw it out. My prediction, my crazy prediction for E3 is there. somebody's going to announce either an updated console or a new console. Not in, like, outside of the Scorpio, because everybody already knows about the Scorpio. <laughs> new PlayStation handles. <laughs> Dude, I, there's, somebody's going to announce something crazy console-wise, like a new hardware. Uh-huh. I'm just, I'm calling it right now. Somebody's going to announce something. It's either going to, it's going to be Sony or... Or Switch is going to announce a limited edition Switch. I don't know. But there's going to be a new hardware mm-hmm. somewhere. I would really like to go balls wild. And like you said earlier, Microsoft announced a VR headset. I too would like this. I'd, 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 be, surp- I'd be really surprised if that happened. Like I think I said, at least a price drop. But something VR related will be it. Well, and that's, that's, like I said, that's my outlandish, like, I feel that thing. So. <laughs> Jody. One more thing. I want 2K to announce a new Bioshock game. I want it in my life so bad. Uh, I need it. I feel like I feel like Bioshock Infinite though did such a good job of like tying the whole series together that I'd be okay with them not doing another one. Yeah, I would too, but at the same time they also opened it up to where you can do so much yeah, more with the series. There is like too. a multiverse now. So it's like, it's like, fuck, I want a new Bioshock game because I loved Bioshock Infinite so much. Sorry, continue. Yeah, my prediction, my crazy-ass prediction was fucking Microsoft VR headset. Okay. okay. So if, if not a VR headset, it's going to be something VR. It's going to be something to compete. Kind of like when PlayStation did the move and then Xbox did the Connect. It's going to be something to compete with a VR. I, if, if we're going to talk about just like partnerships... The partnership is going to be the Vive with, with the um, with Xbox. That would be fantastic. I, the only reason I'm saying that is because Microsoft already does the play anywhere, and so like there's already like some interconnectivity between Valve games and Microsoft games from that, um, and the Connect uses um, infrared specifically for tracking, and so does the um, so does the Vive. I'm gonna go way out there. 
Microsoft's going to announce a hollow deck. Like a virtual put nobody watch Star Trek? No, I no. I know what you're saying. Okay. I, I don't. You don't know what a hollow deck is? I don't know what a hollow deck is. Basically you walk into it an empty room that becomes like whatever the fuck you want it to be. Oh, that's dope. Wait, we're, we're probably years won't away happen that. though. No, man. That. Xbox, Microsoft's gonna announce it. They're gonna be like, "Hey guys, we're working on a Hollow Deck. It'll be out in twenty years. It's only twenty thousand dollars." <laughs> plug plug right up to your Xbox. You also, you also your have, Xbox One Eighty. You also have to have it. You have to ho- buy a whole blank room just to use it. <laughs> uh, and sew it to your house, like literally sew it. All right. Wish list game for me. This will never happen. Probably, never happen. Probably. I want a new Burnout. You picked the strangest games. <laughs> Just thinking about it. Like, if there was a game that was announced that like has been kind of out for the count for a while that they brought back, I'd be really happy if it was Burnout. Yeah. I feel like... As, as a person as, who doesn't like racing games, Burnout games are amazing. Dude, Midnight Club, man. I will say, like... <laughs> All right, Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition was great. If, best one, best one. If a new Burnout comes out... <laughs> They're not going to announce it. It's just going to be like, bam, burnout. Digital dern, uh, digital dern out. <laughs> <laughs> digital <Those> download. <laughs> burnout five, digital dern out. <laughs> yeah, burnout, dern out. <laughs> it's like fucking Dell Gribbles. Tra- <laughs> Holy shit. Sounds like the beginning of a, uh, like a bluegrass song. Oh, boy. <laughs> Like this really country digital dirt now. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Ford edition. <laughs> all right, so all right, let's fucking end this shit. We've been right. we've been at this for a while, right? We actually did an hour long imagery. Wow. Hour. All right, so thank you so much for listening and or watching this podcast. Mm-hmm. My name is Alex. My name is Eric. I'm Jenny. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and thank you for listening to podcast number twenty six. <laughs> Catch y'all next week. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye, Internet.